Hello and welcome again to roguelike advice. In my last video we talked about different ways to make your roguelike more interesting to play and to not make it a slog. However, there are many different strategies you can employ to do this. Today we'll be looking at aggressive strategies. I have a particular zone here, but really this video will be more in general about the abstraction of what it means to play aggressively. So in my particular case, with turn-based combat from a set moveset, in order to make the moves not feel repetitive or just more efficient than their non-aggressive counterparts, we must have some serious drawbacks to the moves. Because if your moves deal damage super efficiently and do not have some sort of drawback, um, this is a drawback down here. If this just out, it dealt eight damage, so it could be aggressive, that would not be fun because it would just be better than everything else. In order to make it better, you must have some creative drawbacks. The first way in order to make moves more aggressive is to make them um, single use per battle. This move gets to deal a whopping five damage that's higher than normal, but can only be used once every battle. This makes it so the aggressive deck can deal out a lot of damage, but if the opponent can survive the original onslaught, then the aggressive deck is in a severely bad position because they cannot push forward through this. Another strategy is moves that self-reduce in attack. This makes it so you have a chance of reducing your attack. This move has a chance of reducing your attack. When you reduce the player's attack, it causes them to not be able to deal as much damage, obviously, and over time, throughout the course of the game, although the moves might start very efficient, and overall their damage will go down, and anybody who plays quickly will have a way to fight against this. A third possible way is through making an unsustainable strategy. This is sort of seen in the attack reduction theme, but it can also be seen through a self-damage. This move, Afflict, gets to deal extra damage for every damage you dealt to yourself last turn. You can play highly efficient moves that also damage yourself, and then play this for extra damage. This makes it a particularly good move in those strategies. However, those strategies cannot keep up throughout the game because at a certain point they will just die and their all their moves become unusable. It also opens up interesting counterplay so that if the other slower player wants to play aggressive even though they might be slower overall against the self-damaged player, they might succeed. It opens up interesting thoughtful gameplay in how to counter a specific strategy. Is it good for the player to play aggressively or the bosses to? Because those are two different things. Do you want to put the player on the back foot all the time so they're trying to play defensive against these? Or do you want to encourage them to play aggressively? Because those are two different things. Keep that in mind and try to make your moves also fun to be played against in case the bosses ever use them against the player. Because if your moves are not fun to play against, it might be good for the player, but not fun for the player to play against, in which that is not good. You can spice this up with a number of... One issue that stems from playing aggressive is shorter games. Um, and this guy's a lot of text, but the important thing is uh, his secret. Secrets are interesting and adds a gameplay. However, if with shorter games, there's less area to find any sort of secrets. So, in order to hide your secrets better in gameplay, if in an aggressive area, make them more abstract things. Such as this guy, you see his face, right? A little bit ugly, he's a stone earth dragon. If we look over here at the zone he's in, you might notice, oh, what's that in the background? Is that his face? And then when you when you uh, when you look at this guy's Slayer Texas, you don't find him lurking about. And when you look at this zone, he's in the background. So the secret is when you see him in the background, he gets angry, shows up with extra attack, and gives you special loot. Something like this is both a secret, which encourages the player to activate actively interact with the game world, and also not exactly integrated with gameplay in the normal way, in order to you know allow it to f flourish more in a world of shorter games. In worlds such as this, it's important to have other themes, and I find a good effect that often pairs well with um, aggression is a chaos effect. So this effect performs rituals, which will summon these fiends over here, which have generally chaotic effects. And if you add a non-super aggressive theme, sub-theme in your aggression area, or your aggressive theme area, It'll allow it to slow down a bit overall, and also have a counter activity to all the aggression, because pure just deal as much damage as fast as you can, can get a little bit degenerate depending on how you design it, so I find adding another thing that's sort of that, uh, it's adjacent in the archetype of chaos, is a good thing. So this has been an overview on how to make 
um, aggression zones fun in roguelikes with my particular way of moveset. It relates to the last video, so you might want to go watch that if you haven't already. It's what not to do when making a roguelike. And if you like, remember to make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.